Hi, welcome to today's message from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Our study on the fruit of the Spirit focuses today on goodness. We are in the New Testament book of Galatians, chapter 5. You can follow along with the Life Notes by downloading them from calvaryaz.com forward slash life notes. Now, here is Pastor Chad Garrison. I'm going to invite you to take a seat. Grab your Bible or your Bible app and turn to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians 5. If you've been with us, then you know we're still in our Galatians study. And, uh, and if you're new, then that's fine. Uh, and by the way, if you don't have a Bible or a Bible app on your device, that's fine. Grab a Bible on the seats around you. Turn to page 1,158. That's 1158. You'll be able to follow along with us. And as always, if you're at any of our campuses uh, and, uh, and you need a Bible, feel free to take one. It is our gift to you. Uh, they're in the seats around you, and, and, uh, and it's, we want you to have the Bible, read the Bible, because we know if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. If you're joining us online and you don't have a Bible and you want one, then um, uh, just ask the service host or email us at calvaryaz.com. We will get you a Bible because we know that you will, if, again, if you read and apply God's Word, God will change your life. Hey, before we dive into Galatians 5, let me just give you an update uh, on Limitless. And, and, you know, and given the news of the day and all the stuff that's going on, that may seem like a, a lesser important thing. But I just hadn't updated you in over a month. And I wanted you guys to know that to this point, after four months of the campaign, we've received over $821,000 towards, uh, the, the, yeah, towards the Limitless campaign. And that's you guys being generous. Uh, and I was looking at that going, wow, four months. That's $205,000 a month, $43,000 a week that has been coming in. Praise God for the generosity of his people. I'm celebrating and we are, uh, we're on track. We're going to be uh, adding the mezzanine next summer uh, here. And uh, so we'll talk about that later on. But uh, just know that, that uh, we're moving forward. So praise God. Hey, have you ever taken a course whether high school, college, or professional development, that you thought, this is useless. Anyone? Anyone? Know? Okay. I see those hands. Yes, I see. I do. You know, because you're, you're sitting there and you're thinking, I'm never going to use this. And, and look, I've, I've taken a number of those, and several times I was right. It was completely useless. But I've also been terribly mistaken. And so I want to do a little bit of confessing as we begin. So I was in college, and I had to take, um, I was studying for ministry, obviously, and, and I had to take a business class, so I took Business 101. I don't know if that's what it was called. That's just what it seemed like. I didn't care. I didn't want to take the class. Uh, I hated it. I didn't learn anything. I didn't try. I was going into ministry. I was learning how to preach. I was learning the Bible. I was even learning Greek. Really use that a lot. Um, and I was going to teach and preach and do missions. And I thought the business class was a complete waste of my time. So I wasted the class. And I'll tell you right now, I was an idiot. So about a decade later, I became pastor of Calvary. The church started growing. And guess what I needed to know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I got to learn this stuff now. I didn't want to learn it when I had the class and I paid for it. Now I got to do it on my own. And I've been, I spent years catching up on business and leadership principles I should have already been studying. So uh, today we're continuing our deep dive into the fruit of the Holy Spirit, Galatians chapter 5. You guys got it memorized yet? Galatians 5, 22 and 23, for the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Hey, by the way, you guys, you guys are much louder than any other services, but I'm not going to tell them. I'll tell them tomorrow. Uh, so anyway, the, uh, look, we're talking about goodness today, all right? And, and, and goodness is one of the overlooked, undervalued, maybe even misunderstood characteristics of Jesus. So uh, the Holy Spirit is committed to teaching everyone a, who is a follower of Jesus goodness. So if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, you believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for your sins, you believe that Jesus was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then the Holy Spirit is in you, and the Holy Spirit is teaching you goodness. By the way, um, a lot of us sometimes approach the fruit of the Spirit like I approached Business 101, and we don't want to learn anything, and we get to take the class over and over and over again until we actually pay attention. So I, I just would encourage you to pay attention 
because we need to learn it. And, and so if we're going to have to learn what goodness is, we begin with the question is, what is goodness? What is goodness? Is it simply being good? I mean, a good person, whatever a good person is. And, and by the way, that's kind of what I was taught. Goodness was basically taught to me as if you were abstaining from badness. <laughs> right? Oh, okay, you want to be good? Don't be bad. There you go. You know, just don't be evil. And, you know, Christians are good people, which means we don't dance, drink, cuss, or chew, or run with girls who do. Uh, <laughs> look, that, that's how it was kind of conveyed to me. And, and so basically what, what I was taught growing up in church and, and what a lot of you were taught was that, that goodness was just not doing the bad stuff, which means that goodness was passive in the way that we were taught. And, and, and I'm just going to say that while goodness does include abstaining from sin, because James 1.27 says, you know, keep yourself unstained from the world, and talking about pure and undefiled religion, that's only part of it. And so what I would like to say is while I wasn't taught incorrectly, I wasn't taught completely the truth, because I was taught half of the truth. Goodness was, you know, taught to me as abstaining from or being passive uh, and not doing bad stuff. And, and while that's partially true, it's not. But see, goodness is significant for every follower of Jesus. Now, it's related to kindness, because a lot of times we just go, kindness, goodness, what's the difference? So kindness is really your attitude about how you see people and how you approach people. Okay? Because when, when you see people the way that God sees them, you treat them with kindness. Goodness, though, is, is a little bit more of an active voice. It's about action what we do with our lives. It's not passive at all. It is active. Uh, continuing with James, uh, you know, Jesus' half-brother, he wrote in chapter 2 of his letter, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. We're talking about goodness. Goodness is acting for the kingdom of God. Goodness is doing the work of Jesus as his representatives literally as his hands and feet. It, it is receiving the, the responsibility that is ours and, and, and engaging in the actions of Jesus in this world. The Apostle Paul said that you are ambassadors for Christ, that, that Christ is in you imploring people to be reconciled to God. So, you, you know, we've been given this responsibility to represent Jesus. That's where goodness comes in because unless we get this whole goodness thing, we don't represent Jesus well at all. Yeah, I'll just explain how, how it was taught to me. So this is how it was taught to me incorrectly. Okay, if you abstain from all the bad stuff, then people will see your life and they'll be impressed and they'll be drawn to Jesus. And that is not what happened. Okay, I abstained from all the bad stuff and people saw my life and thought, Chad's boring. <laughs> they were not, none, of my, none of my friends were like, oh, I want to be like that. He's just boring. He doesn't do anything fun. He doesn't do anything crazy. He doesn't do anything wild. And, and so that didn't draw anyone to Jesus because there was no action involved in it. It was passive. But see, we want to be active for Christ, his hands and his feet. By the way, that's why radical service is one of our core values here at Calvary. Followers of Jesus best demonstrate the love of God through acts of kindness and service. It's through what we do that draws people to Jesus. By the way, that's why we serve our communities. That's why we bless our schools. That's why we give generously to people in need. That's why we celebrate our army of volunteers here at Calvary. We are acting for the kingdom of God. So we were not rescued by Jesus to only abstain from the bad because we were created to do good works. We were created to do good works. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10, if you wanna turn a page in your Bible, if you have one like me, uh, the, one of the Pew Bibles, verse 10 says, for we are God's workmanship, literally his artwork. We are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Did you catch that? We were created to do good works. By the way, that means that God created you, which is why every single life matters which is why we want to see people differently and treat them with kindness. So God created you, but it doesn't stop there. God created you for a purpose. You have a reason to exist. By the way, that's one of the really appealing things about uh, following Jesus. 
Uh, I'm going to rant just for a minute. You know, you know the whole evolutionary biology thing where it's like, okay, everything happened by an accident and the world just happened to exist and life just happened to form and, and we just happened to be here. We are just a, a, you know, a beautiful accident. Which means that it, by default, if you follow the logic that every single being acts in a way that is, is based on self-preservation. The species is about self-preservation, which means that we're supposed to be built in for self-preservation. <laughs> we live in a sinful world. Most people are bent on self-destruction. So there's that. But the reality is that when you follow Jesus, he gives you a purpose. You are not an accident. You were created by God. You were loved by God. He wants to redeem your life and he wants to give you a purpose, something to do with your life that makes an eternal difference in this world. And I think that is significant. I think that is appealing. I think that is wonderful because God calls us to self-sacrifice, not self-preservation, and he calls us to purpose. So God created us for a purpose. But understand, God didn't create me to do your job, and God didn't create you to do my job. And, and that, by the way, that applies to every single person in the room. You can look at the person next to you and go, yeah, yeah, I'm not doing your job. Because they got a job, and you got a job. See, God created you to do good works, which he prepared in advance for you to do. And that, I mean, that is either the coolest news or the most terrifying news that you're ever going to hear. Right? If you're a follower of Jesus, if you're not a follower of Jesus, you're off the hook right now, but, but hell's your destiny, so that's not cool. But, um, but if you're a follower of Jesus, then, um, then you have this to-do list that God gave you for your life and your influence and your purpose. And, and I think that is wonderful if you're doing it. Um, so goodness is serving Christ together so he can change lives through us. Goodness is serving Christ together so he can change lives through you. So I hope you're beginning to grasp your significance to God's kingdom. You are important. You matter. Because God has something for you. And he has something for me. And, and it's not about whether you do your job or I'm not checking on your job. I just need to do my job. You just need to do your job. And, and God's going to reward us for that. You matter. What you do matters. You were created to do good works and can I just tell you that goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change? A powerful demonstration of life change. Matthew 5, 16. Jesus is talking about us being the light of the world. And he says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Let your light shine before other people so they can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. They glorify your Father in heaven by praising him like you praise him. This is about life change. This is about the power of God to change lives through how you live your life differently, which is why the whole passive thing doesn't work because they can't see anything if you're just passive. But if you're actively serving God, if you're actively engaged in, you know, being the hands and feet of Jesus, people are going to see that and it's going to be a life-changing um, message that they see. You see, when we engage in doing good works prepared for us by God, people see and they're drawn towards Jesus. And so they see those good deeds and they eventually will glorify God. Again, I'm just going to say this. This is why we serve our communities, why it is essential to what we do at Calvary. Okay, if, if you've been here any length of time and you're like, okay, we're moving back into serve season because the temperature drops below 1,000 degrees and we get to go back out and do, you know, serve our schools and we get to, you know, teach your appreciation and we get to collect candy for Main Street and we get to go on Main Street and serve. I know you guys are already looking forward to October right now, right? When, it, when it, you know, the lows drop below 90 and the, you know, highs drop below 100 and, and you know, so we're, Eventually. So we're going to get there. But, you know, we, we start serving. That's why we do the backpacks for all the, the needy kids. We did over a thousand backpacks last year up and down the Colorado River, California, Mexico, all over the place. That's why we build homes in Baja and wells in Mozambique. And it's why we, you know, build compassion centers in Honduras. All these things are, we're doing these because we want to demonstrate the life-changing power of Jesus. And, and so what we're hoping is people will, who are unchurched see us serving with joy and humility, and, and it's intriguing to them. I mean, if you've been on part of our projects, probably at some point somebody came up and said, why are you guys doing this? Why, why are you doing this? And, and the answer is because, you know, we love our community and God wants to communicate his love through us to our community. And, and there's been a lot of conversations that have happened as we've been serving our community and doing the different things 
And hopefully that, that conversation is going to lead to a you know, conversation about Jesus. And hopefully you're going to be able to invite them to come to church with you. And hopefully they're going to make a decision to follow Jesus. And by the way, it's been working for about the last 20 years. As we see person after person experience that life-changing relationship with Jesus. And that's why serving is such a big deal as a church and for you and me personally. And so that's why we do all those things that we do. Everything from giving gift cards, providing benevolence, supporting community ministries like Food Bank and Faith and Grace and Pregnancy Care. It's an example of God's life-changing power through our actions collectively of goodness. Okay, we're trying to live out this fruit of the Spirit together in what we're doing. And it's why every single one of us is important to the task. Now, um, you are important to the task. Uh, let me explain how this works. By the way, we can't do this just with pastors and staff and a few volunteers. We need all of us serving together, representing Jesus through our good works. Not just when we do community things as a church, but every single day. Um, and, it, and it's significant for the kingdom because you meet people that I will never meet. Okay? You guys understand that, right? You travel in your sphere, you have your friends, you have your family, you have your neighbors, you have the people that you relate to. You're going to meet people that I will never meet. And by the way, those people really don't want to meet me anyway. <laughs> right? I mean, if they're, if they're unchurched, pastors are, are kind of like unicorns. They're kind of, they kind of freak them out. Actually, we're more like clowns, okay? Uh, <laughs> You know, clowns make everybody a little bit nervous, and uh, that's what pastors do. They just make people nervous, make it awkward. And, and so, you know, we don't, I, I know that if you, people you say all the time, well, pastor, I just want you to meet them. And I go, no, it's going to freak them out if I meet them. It's going to make them uncomfortable. They know you. They trust you. They see your life. By the way, if your life doesn't influence them for Jesus, what I say is not going to matter. Your life is the credible testimony to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. If we're going to reach our communities, if we're going to reach Lake Havasu, then that means that, that it can't just be me and the pastors representing Jesus. It means it has to be us. Living out the goodness of God because he's been good to us. So we go out into the community and we do it every single day. Which is why we've got to, you know, have the attitude of kindness and we've got to have the actions of goodness if we're going to be able to do that. Because as I mentioned last week, can't, you know, can't be a jerk for Jesus and represent Jesus. And, and, and quite honestly, if we're just passively good, we're not going to com communicate the goodness of God to anybody. It's got to be through our actions of serving our community. So your family and friends, do they see God's goodness in your life? Because goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change. And then I want you to know that goodness is a natural result of grace. Natural result of grace. Again, Ephesians 2, just before we got to verse 10, it had verses 8 and 9. Paul just says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Um, I want you to know goodness results from grace. Our salvation is through Jesus' death and resurrection. Okay? Understand that when Jesus went to the cross, he took your sins and my sins upon himself. He paid the penalty that we could not pay. He suffered for us so that we did not have to suffer hell. Okay? That's how that worked. In fact, if, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, right after Paul talks about us being Christ's ambassadors, he said, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So we are saved through the actions of Jesus, not because we are good people, not because we do good deeds, not because we serve our community, not because we are abstaining from the bad stuff and trying to be good people. That is not what gets us in. Our salvation is not because of good works. Paul makes that really clear in Ephesians 2, doesn't he? Not by works, so no one can boast. And this is essential to understand because motives matter. Your motives matter. My motives matter. Why we do what we do matters. So a question I'd love for you to wrestle with is why do you engage in good works? Why do you engage in goodness in your life? You see, all of us need to be able to answer that. 
if you are being good or doing good works to gain God's favor, to try and earn salvation or to get to heaven, you are missing out on grace and you're living a legalistic religious life, which Paul throughout Galatians exposes as slavery. And nobody here wants you to do that. Now, let me be really clear. I know there's some of you that are, that are listening that have not yet decided to make a, a commitment to follow Jesus. And I would love for you to make that commitment because I want you to know forgiveness of sin. I want you to know eternal life. I want you to know that God loves you. I want you to follow Jesus because he leads to life and to blessing, okay? So if you want to talk about that after the service, we'd love to talk. Our prayer team's gonna be here. They will talk with you. Pastors are out there. At least fill out a connect card and say, hey, I wanna talk. All right, so, so that's some. But there's some of you that, that you know, hey, you, you say you're a Jesus follower, but you're still trying to think that, oh, if I do these good things, then God's gonna show me favor. You're trying to win God's favor. Can I just tell you, God already loves you completely, and, and he thinks you're wonderful, and he wants to bless you. And, and, and so, he, but you don't get that blessing by, by bartering with God or trying to impress God. We serve God because we are grateful for his salvation. Okay, that the motive is not, oh, I need to do this so that God will like me. The, the motive is, I, I want to do this because God has blessed me. I want to, to be good. I want to embody goodness because I have been forgiven when, and I get to go to heaven when I deserve hell. That's the motivation. It's like, oh, look at this. God has done all these things for me. I want to bless him. I want to serve him. I want people to know his goodness. Because he's been good to me. I and mean, we just sang it a few minutes ago. You know, all my life he's been faithful. And, and, and all my life he's been so, so good. If that's true in your life, then don't you want everyone else to know it? Yeah. And, and, and not because you have to tell them, but because you want to tell them. Because no one in this world can earn their salvation. I mean, that's why Romans 6, the Apostle Paul says, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. So we engage in good works out of our gratitude. We're thankful for the gift of God. So we embrace the tasks that God has for us. Your to-do list, my to-do list, we, we look at it and we go, thank you, God, that I get to do this. And we dive in. Again, not because like, oh, I have to do this. And I understand that. I, I mean, look, I, I don't really know how you think about this to-do list thing. But I grew up with uh, parents who always had a to-do list. It was always way too long, and, and none of it was what I wanted to do. Can I, can I just tell you that? I mean, you know, none of it was what I wanted to do. And, uh, and so I tried really hard not to do any of it and got in trouble for that all the time. But when we step into what God has for us, when we ask God, God, hey, what do you want me to do? And, and God puts things before us, and we step into those, and we do those— it, it blesses our lives tremendously. Do you know that Jesus said, if anyone wants to be great among you, he has to be the servant of everyone? Which means that you're gonna get blessed the more that you serve, the more that you give yourself to God, the more that you embrace that to-do list and you say, God, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna serve you and I'm gonna bless other people in your name and I'm gonna represent you in every way that I can by abstaining from evil, but also by acting out in love in our community by blessing people in our community, by joining in the church and serving, but I'm gonna serve independently too. I'm just gonna be that person. And when we do that, I'm just telling you, God will show up in your life in ways that you never imagined. You're gonna experience his peace, his joy, his blessings, all the fruit of the Spirit gonna to come together as you begin to spend your efforts thinking about others before you think about yourself. Now, I share all that, and my concern is that I can't make everyone understand God's grace and live out goodness just from gratitude. My concern is that, that, that there are some still sitting here that are going, okay, but I've got to do this. I have to do this. And, 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 I, and I would desperately love to sit down with you if you don't understand grace and share with you how God's grace can change your life. I, I, I really want you to know there's no shame. There's no guilt. There's no, you know, you don't have to try and pay for what you've done that God offers you complete forgiveness and healing, and now you can just live free without shame, without guilt, without fear of judgment or retribution or any of that because of God's goodness towards you. And you can live out your goodness towards others because I want us all to just simply praise God and serve out of gratitude and joy. You know, as... Uh, 
as I think about that and I think about the events of the day, and if, and if you don't know, you know, there was a shooting at, at uh, uh, one of the Trump rallies and, and uh, people were hit and uh, everything. Our world is so broken. Our world is so messed up. Our world is so filled with hatred and violence. And, and, and that's, you know, that's just what we see. And we see it up close. There's abuse and there's, and there's uh, anger and, and people are living such joyless lives. We can make a difference if we take hold of the message of Christ and we allow him to inhabit our hearts and our lives in ways that are transformative for us and, and people will see it and people will respond. And if you really don't know what that's like, even if you're a follower of Jesus and you really don't know what that's like, hey, make an appointment with one of the pastors. Let's talk. Show up at Celebrate Recovery Monday night and let, let them show you some of what that freedom looks like. At least, <laughs> you guys must be tired. They just got back from Celebrate Recovery Summit and they were really slow on that uptake. Uh, but uh, hey, God wants to transform your life and he wants to use your life. And, and if you're sitting there thinking, well, what does my to-do list look like? And you don't have a clue, again, make an appointment with a pastor, uh, you know, get together with, uh, you know, our serve director, Amber, somebody who can help you think through your gifting and your abilities and your talent and your interests and let God show you what he can use you for. Because I'm just telling you, he wants to use every single one of us in a way that makes a difference in this world. So if we do that together, our communities will see our good deeds, they'll glorify our Father in heaven. And we'll see more and more people declare their faith in Christ in baptism. So are you doing the good works that God prepared for you? Is Jesus shining through your life? Are you serving out of gratitude and joy? Are you letting the Holy Spirit teach you goodness? Let's pray. Father, thanks for your patience with us. You know, some of us haven't gotten around to our to-do list in a while, and we just need to acknowledge that and thank you for grace because uh, even if we're lazy children, you still love us and you're still gonna save us. But God, we, we don't wanna be lazy children. We wanna be responsible servants of Jesus Christ. We wanna be faithful to you. So God, uh, just speak to us now. Even as we prepare to move into a time of remembering your death and resurrection that bought our freedom and made us new, God, we want to, to rejoice in that, but we also wanna recommit ourselves to you. So speak to our hearts. Challenge our thinking, our priorities, so that we can live out your goodness in our lives. In our attitudes, in our words, in our deeds, with our, our actions, God, we want to be your servants. Um, so we uh, invite the Holy Spirit to teach us, to convict us, and to change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Goodness is a powerful demonstration of life change and a natural result of grace. And according to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, we were created to do good works. If today's message spoke to you and you'd like to speak to one of our pastors, I invite you to fill out our online connect card. It's accessible at calvaryaz.com forward slash connect. One of our pastors will reach out to you in the coming days to speak with and pray with you. Well, that's all for today. Please come back next week when we'll be focusing on faithfulness. Bye-bye.